Good morning, my dear friends in Christ. Today, I'd like to reflect with you on the gospel for Saturday of the 23rd week in ordinary time, which is also the feast day of the most holy name of Mary. The feast day of the birth of Mary, of course, was celebrated on September 8th. Today is the 12th. Jesus said to his disciples, a good tree does not bear rotten fruit, nor does a rotten tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For people do not pick figs from thorn bushes, nor do they gather grapes from brambles. A good person out of the store of goodness in his heart produces good, but an evil person out of a store of evil produces evil. For from the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, but do not do what I command? I will show you what someone is like who comes to me, listens to my words and acts on them. That one is like a man building a house who dug deeply and laid the foundation on rock. When the flood came and the river burst against that house, but could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who listens and does not act is like a person who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the river burst against it, it collapsed at once and was completely destroyed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A good tree does not bear rotten fruit, nor does a rotten tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. This is St. Luke's version from his Sermon on the Plain, you know, Luke chapter 6, verse 43 and 44. St. Matthew also comments on this, saying every good tree bears good fruit and every rotten tree bears rotten fruit. St. Anthony of Padua in his eighth sermon after Pentecost also comments on this passage, and he uses this analogy of a tree to describe spiritual growth. If we want to grow up to heaven and bear fruit and fruit that will last, the fruits of contemplation, then we need to begin with the roots. And he speaks of the roots of humility. We need to have deep and profound roots. And he says that humility, he defines humility in this way. A man is what he is before God and nothing more. We must recognize that we are the creature and he is the creator. From these deep roots of humility, whereby we think less of ourselves and more of God and more even of others, then he says, grows up the trunk of obedience. Obedience is not a slavish obedience to the law. Rather, in the scriptures, obedience is always to be seen in the context of love. Jesus says, even at the Last Supper, you are my friends if you do what I command you love one another. God gave Israel the law because he loved Israel. It was a privileged revelation to them. And they, their response to that law should have been a one of deep and profound love. Obedience then to the law of God. Nothing good comes from disobedience, as we see in the example of our first parents, Adam and Eve, who ate from the fruit of the tree, which they were told not to eat from. From these from the tr roots of humility and the trunk of obedience shoot forth the branches of charity. The whole law is actually summarized in one commandment, to love our neighbor, right, who bears also the image of God. Yes, we have to love one another. Do we do this? So often we fail in charity, though it says in the scriptures, a single act of charity covers a multitude of sins. We fail in charity not only by in what we do, but in what we fail to do, especially toward the least of our brothers. We fail in charity within our family, whom we should love the most. We're sometimes hardest on them, or we take them for granted, and love can never be taken for granted. Sometimes we fail in simple things like speech. From the branches of charity, St. Anthony says, come forth the leaves of holy preaching. So we should preach the gospel always. We can preach the gospel if you will, by word and deed. We can share with people what God in Christ Jesus has done for us. We can preach without preaching as Mother Teresa's sisters sometimes pray through our loving gestures. From the leaves of holy preaching, St. Anthony finally says, come forth the fruit of contemplation. And it is these fruits of contemplation that we try to hand on to others. Every good tree is known, a, does not bear, a good tree does not bear rotten fruit, nor does a rotten tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its fruit, or every good tree bears good fruit, every rotten tree bears rotten fruit.
But if you know them by their fruits, then let us consider Blessed Virgin Mary. We celebrate today the feast of the holy name of Mary. We know her by the fruit, by her fruits. She remains a virgin, yet is fruitful. And the fruit that she bears for the world is our salvation, her son, Jesus. She was humble. She was the lowly handmaiden of the Lord. She was obedient to God's word. She said, let it be done unto me according to your word. She showed charity. Think about how she came to the assistance of the couple at the wedding feast of Cana. She preached the leaves of holy preaching. She, she gave forth the leaves of holy preaching at the, again at the wedding feast of Cana. Her words, though minimal, are simply this, do whatever he tells you, which also is connected with the idea of obedience. And finally, she bore fruit, the fruit of her beloved son, the blessed fruit of her womb, Jesus the Savior. Yes, Mary was one who listened to the word of God and acted upon it. She was one who built her whole life on a solid foundation, the foundation of faith in God, who never abandoned her and who filled her with joy, filled her with the Holy Spirit, filled her with the eternal word of God, who took up residence in her womb. She was wise, not like the foolish person who built a house on ground without foundation. Yes, within her womb, wisdom had built herself a home. In reflecting on the holy name of Mary in the Office of Readings, and unfortunately I don't have a good English translation of this, uh, we are given a, a church's um, uh, liturgy, in the church's liturgy, a reading from St. Bernard of Clairvaux on the holy name of Mary. And he's reflecting on the name of Mary, he says, and the Virgin's name was Mary. Let us speak a little about this name, which is said to mean star of the sea, and which so well befits the Virgin Mother. Rightly, she is likened to a star. As a star emits a ray without being dimmed, so the Virgin brought forth her son without receiving any harm, any injury, any lesion. The ray takes nothing from the brightness of the star, nor does the son from his mother take from his mother's virginal integrity. This is the noble star that came forth from the house of Jacob, whose ray illuminates the whole world, whose splendor shines in the heavens, penetrates the abyss, and traversing the whole earth, gives warmth rather to souls than to bodies, cherishing virtues, withering and burning out vices. Mary is that bright and incomparable star whom we need to see raised above this spacious and vast sea, shining by her merits and giving light to us by her example. All of you who see yourselves amid the tides of the world, tossed by storms and tempests rather than walking on the land, do not turn your eyes away from this shining star unless you want to be overwhelmed by the hurricane, by the tempest. If temptation storms or you fall upon the rocks of tribulation, look to the star, call upon Mary. If you are tossed by the waves of pride or ambition, calumny or envy, look to the star, call upon Mary. If anger or avarice or the desires of the flesh dash against the ship of your soul, turn your eyes to Mary. If troubled by the enormity of your crimes, ashamed of your guilty conscience, terrified by dread of judgment, you begin to sink into the gulf of sadness or the abyss of despair, think of Mary. In dangers, in anguish, in doubt, think of Mary, call upon Mary, let her name even be on your lips, ever in your heart. And the better to obtain the help of her prayers, imitate the example of her life. Following her, you will not stray. Invoking her, you will not despair. Thinking of her, you will not wander. Upheld by her, you will not fall. Shielded by her, you will not fear. Guided by her, you will not grow weary. Favored by her, you will reach your goal, the safe harbor, and you will experience in yourself, how good is that saying? 
and the Virgin's name was Mary.